thank you for the introduction. Um, I was going to just introduce myself as well. I'm Seth Johns. I'm the pastor of Student Ministries and Visitation here at Prince Street Church. And I'm going to be um, going along with uh, where Pastor Mike has been in Ephesians. I'll be in Ephesians 3, 14 through 21 today. But before we get started with that, is anyone, has anyone done or familiar with tree service, like tree removal specifically? Okay, we got some. We have some here. So when I was going to college, one of the summers that I came home for summer, um, in my time off, I was trying to find a job. So I, I knew someone in my church at the time who had a small family-owned business, and it was tree removal. And when I came to learn during the time of tree removal uh, that I had worked there, is one, one thing, but it's kind of common if you think about it, the roots of a tree are really hard to remove. It, it makes sense, but when I was there, you know, the easy part and the quick part of removing a tree is just getting the chainsaw out and watching the things drop as long as you're not in the way when you're watching out, uh, as long as you watch out for that stuff falling down, then the hardest part is removing the stump and the roots. And since, we, since I was in a smaller um, tree removal business, you know, we didn't have the capabilities that, that you see sometimes on TV where they come in with this huge backo thing and they just rip right through the roots and they just bring everything out. All we had was this, this little piece of machinery, probably about that big, and it, it was a heavy piece of machinery. And it had its own like little engine to help you get it close to the stump. And you would come up and say, if this is the stump, you would have it there and you'd just sit there. And you'd go back, and you'd go forth, and you just keep going right and left. And it was a slow process, and it had this big wheel it would spin, and it would grind down the stump, and then eventually you'd have to maneuver it over to this side because you only got one side of the stump there. And then you're working on the other side, and even that didn't remove the roots, but it ground the stump down enough that you could cover it up and it wouldn't get in the way of a mower. So with that in mind today, um, here we are. With that in mind, it, it kept going through my mind as I was grinding down these stumps. It took a really long time to do that, but you just think about everything that the roots do for a tree. You think about how stable they hold a tree. You think about how hard it is for them to be removed. Um, and with that in mind, today I'm going to be looking at a uh, prayer from Paul for the Ephesians, and we're going to be looking at rooted in God's love. But before we do that, I want to say a quick prayer before we dive in. So if everyone just bows their heads with me, I'd like to open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for this opportunity that we all can come out as believers and worship you this morning. Um, we just want to thank you for this week, even though it has been hot, but just thank you for the things that we can do uh, even during this heat, the different things that you, uh, different alleys that you connect us through, uh, through the circumstances that you bring up uh, through our time. Just help us to have open ears and help us to hear ultimately what you want to hear today, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if you guys want to follow along, I'm going to be in Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. I'm going to read through. Um, this passage quick, and then we're going to go through and break it down a little bit more. So I'll go ahead and open here. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep um, is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is, work, that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. 
So one of the things I want to point out before we get started that I want us to keep in mind as we work through this is that this is a prayer. This is Paul's prayer for the Ephesians because oftentimes when I'm reading through the Bible, it's easy for me to kind of forget, well, wait a second, this isn't just anything, this is a prayer. And to start off the prayer, Paul says a few things here. Um, he says, for this reason, I kneel. And Pastor Mike had previously mentioned for this reason at the beginning of chapter 3 in the first verse, uh, which kind of leads us to look back at what he's talking about. And he finishes at the end of chapter 2 talking about how the Jews and the Gentiles can all be unified as believers. So he's going in, he's saying, for this reason, I kneel. So this is Paul showing God authority, taking this authority position as he prays. He's kneeling down. And some of the commentaries I was reading, uh, some of the Jewish people at the time uh, may have stood with their hands raised as they prayed as an authority sign to God. So he says, I kneel before the Father. And I love how he uses the word Father because then he says, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. So he uses the word Father to show authority as well. And what this makes me think of is whenever I was growing up, any time that I would go, you know, maybe to a friend's house, maybe it was to a sport, maybe I was getting uh, in a car ride to go to school, I would be riding in the car with my parents, and we'd have a regular conversation the whole way there. And right when we're getting there, just as I'm about to get out of the car door, my parents would always ask me one thing. They would ask me, oh, oh, I went the wrong way. They would ask me, who do you represent? And after, after a little while, I knew that this question, it meant it was a two-part question because there wasn't just one answer to this question. First was I represent the Johns family. I represent the family that I'm part of. And second and more importantly, I represent God. And they always remind me that every time I'm getting out of the car that they wouldn't be there because they wanted me to remember wherever you go, this is what you represent. And it was a good reminder for me as I move forward. But I love how Paul says, from whom every family derives its name from. Um, because it really gets you thinking. In other translations, well, I think it's the NLT talks about, um, it addresses God as the creator of all. So it's again a, an authority thing that Paul is mentioning here at the beginning of his prayer. Um, as we keep that in mind, I want to move forward to a sub-column of being rooted in God's love, which is the power of love, which is in verses 16 and 17. And I'll have it here on the screen, but I encourage you to look, follow along in your Bible as well. Paul says this, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love. And I'm going to stop there real quick. And as we remember that this is a prayer, I just love the way that Paul breaks it down because he starts out by talking about giving glory and authority to God the Father. Now he's asking that, um, that we should be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he also says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts. He touches on each part of the Trinity here. Um, which I think is just a great way that he walks this prayer for the Ephesians. So we see that there's strength, that we can have strength and we can have power through the Spirit within our inner being. But where does this come from? Where is rooting, where is rooted in God's love come from? And I think that it really comes from this, where he says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So how can we be rooted in God's love by having Christ having a home in our heart? I think that oftentimes, whenever we hear a believer talk about becoming a believer, saying that prayer, they often say afterwards, I have Jesus in my heart. They say, I have Jesus in my heart. And one of the things that I was reading a commentary uh, as I was preparing for this, and it made me think about that phrase. And I think that we should be careful that we don't make it we don't make God a possession of ours. 
Because I think if we just say, I have Jesus in my heart, it's easy to kind of think about it. Well, not even think about it. But if you think about what that means, I have, that may almost makes God a possession. But what one of the commentaries pointed out is that there's a different way that we can phrase this. Do you make your heart a home for Christ? Do you make your heart a home for Christ? Are you making it clean? Are you making it organized? When you have a guest over, oftentimes what you do is you, you clean up your house. You make sure that there's no clutter sitting around. You dust off the shelves. You make it all nice. And when the guest comes in the door, what's the first thing you say? Make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. Well, how can someone make themselves at home if everything's kind of just cluttered? There's stuff. They have to step over things as they're walking by. You know, there's, there's just piles of trash sitting there. There's flies flying around your trash can. How can someone make themselves at home when that's what they're walking into? So I think about how can we make our heart a home for Christ? And it reminds me of something. Uh, every time that I would go to my grandparents' house, there's two things that would always happen around mealtime. First of all, the first thing that would happen is that if it was lunchtime, it was lunch meat sandwiches. You had your lunch, you had your lunch meat, you had your cheese, you had your bread. It was lunch meat sandwiches, and that was it. But the second thing that always happened at mealtimes is that as you were approaching the table to eat, my grandfather would always ask one question, do you have clean hands and a pure heart? Do you have clean, clean hands and a pure heart? And as I was preparing for this uh, message, I looked, I looked up where this was from, and it's from Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4. And this is what it says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false God. So who has clean hands and a pure heart? How do we make our heart a home for God? More than making our heart, having our hands clean and our heart pure. Doing things that, that would make Christ happy. Not doing things that we know that would frustrate make God mad, go against what God has for our life. How do we make ourselves, how do we make our heart a home for Christ? And the second part here um, that we see in verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love. So we just looked at, you know, how can we be rooted in love? How can we have Christ as a home in our heart? And it says now that you have that, you're rooted and established in love. And I was thinking about that, and I already mentioned, you know, roots hold up a tree. There could be strong winds, they could be tough weather, it could be the worst day ever for this tree, and it's still standing there because of its roots. And even when you try to remove this tree, and you're left with a stump, it's still the hardest part to remove is the roots. So it made me think, are we rooted in the love of God? Is God's love the thing that's holding us firm no matter what's happening? So I look at, I ask myself the question, what do roots do? And it kind of seems like a, a silly question because we know what roots do. You know, they hold up a tree. But I broke it down into four things. It stabilizes, it keeps a plant in one place, and it holds the plant up through the different weather. It waters, it brings in water and minerals to the plant. It feeds the plant, it stores up food and nutrients, and it translocates and moves the food and the water and the nutrients to the stem so the rest of the plant can grow. So I broke this down. What does it look like when we're talking about the power of love? If Christ is in us, what does it look like if we're rooted and love, it stabilizes us. God's love is always present. It waters us. We're going nonstop, nonstop. In today's world, it's common that we're just so busy. Things are just constantly happening. How do we get refreshed? How do we get our water? What refreshes us? And I hope that today, if we're rooted in love, it's God that's refreshing us. What feeds us? What promotes our growth? What's bringing about us 
making our heart more of a home for God, more of a home for Christ, what's growing us in that way, and what connects us with the love of God, what connects us with God, what brings us to that connection. So the second part I want to look at today is the fulfilling love that comes from being rooted in God's love. And I'm going to, it's verses 18 and 19 I'll be in, and I'll have it here on the screen. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start in the second sentence of verse 17 and walk through it like that. So it's a little bit more of a complete sentence. Paul's praying, he says, I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide and how long, how high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. So we look at the fulfilling love of God. And we notice in verse 19 that we're not going to be able to fully understand, fully grasp the love of God. We're not going to understand the full, infinite power of God's love. But what it does say is that we might be able to grasp how wide and long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And I have, my Bible is an NIV Life Application Bible. It has a little note at the bottom, and it just stuck out so much, so much for me today, and I wanted to share it with you today. It says, God's love is total. It reaches every corner of our experience. It is wide. It covers the breadth of our own experience, and it reaches out to the whole world. God's love is long. It continues to the length of our lives. It is high. It raises to the heights of our celebration and elation. His love is deep. It reaches to the depth of, a, of discouragement, despair, and even death. So we think about this. No matter where we're at, if we're rooted in God's love, if we, make, if we follow after what Paul is praying for for believers and being rooted in God's love, no matter where we're at, no matter how hard of a circumstance we're going through, maybe it's the hardest thing we've ever faced. God's love is there. God's love is fulfilling us. Maybe it's the best day of our life. We just found out something amazing just happened. God's love is still there. Maybe it's the beginning of our life. Maybe we're still a toddler. God's love is still there. Maybe we're getting older God's love is still there his love's there no matter what no matter what we're going through um, so we looked at learning to grasp the magnitude of God's love how wide long high and deep and it reminds me and it takes me back to Romans 8 38 through 39 it says for I am convinced that neither death nor life Ne um, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from that love, that love that's fulfilling, that's always there. And I love that the way Paul writes, it says this in his prayer, filled to the measure of all fullness of God. He could have just said filled, but he says filled to the measure of all fullness. Imagine how full we can be if we have, if we're rooted in the love of God. And it's crazy to think that no matter all of that, no matter how full we can be of God's love, there's still some of it we can't even understand. That's crazy to think about. And here at the, the end of his prayer is a common benediction used um, for church services, and it says, Paul closes his prayer saying this, 
Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. And just one note I want to make here as Paul closes his prayer. I love how he says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, and thinking about how we can't even imagine the love of God, how fulfilling that is. So before I close in prayer, I want to I wanna bring up a couple of things Pastor Mike's been going through the, ch the church anatomy. So what I've done here is I think that Paul in Paul's prayer, we see that the church anatomy is rooted in God's love. Our foundation, we should be established in God's love. And a character, um, a way that we can work on our own character is make our desire and prayer to be rooted in God's love. And what does that look like? making our heart a home for Christ. So one challenge I wanted to give you guys throughout this week, and these questions I want you to be thinking about, and I want them to really really be a deep thought, not just something you, you answer real quick, but something you think about throughout the week. Um, as we check our roots, what stabilizes you? When you're going through hard times, when the wind of storms that's just blowing hard against you, what stabilizes you? Where do you turn to be stable? Where do you turn to hold you firm? What refreshes you when you're running nonstop, when you have so much to do and it feels like you just can't get a break? Where do you turn to be refreshed? What helps you grow? Where do you turn when you're trying to grow, when you're trying to become closer to God, when you're trying to lead others to God, where do you turn? What helps you grow? And last, what are you doing to connect to the love of God? So I want you guys to be thinking about those things. Um, but I'm really, I'm going to close with prayer today as we think about these things. And I want you to think about those as we move throughout this week. So if everyone just bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, just please help us to seek out and be rooted in your love, God. Help us to make this prayer that Paul has our prayer today as we leave. Help us to make it our desire to be rooted in your love, God. Help us to be able to make our heart a place that Christ wants to live. Help us to make our heart a place that's comfortable for Christ to be. Help us to be stabilized, refreshed by your love, God. Help us to be mindful of these things as we continue this week. And help us to check ourselves when it comes to your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Seth.